Thank you for staying with us. Now, amidst con controversies in the aviation sector, the Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Kiamu, has fought at the agreement uh, the country signed with Ethiopian Airlines and the proposed national carrier, Nigeria Air. Recall that the administration of former President Muhammadu Buhari had signed an agreement with Ethiopian Airlines on the proposed national carrier. The minister who briefed State House reporters after the Federal Executive Council meeting said the agreement of the deal gives monopoly of Nigeria's aviation industry to a foreign entity at the expense of other local airliners. He also disclosed that reports had been submitted on the issue and uh, President Bola Tinubu, who will determine, uh, the president rather, will determine the next step. Now we have looked at all the issues and it's before Mr. President. But let me just give one or two snippets because of Nigerians who are, you know, very, you know, uh, who are quick to judge. In the agreement, you are giving tax waivers to Ethiopian airline coming into Nigeria. They, they ask for tax waivers for five years. And you granted them to come and compete with your local airlines who are paying those heavy taxes. How? You want to create a monopoly. Well, joining us via Zoom to discuss more on this development is General Secretary of Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative, Olumide Uwayo. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Quite a revelation there from the Minister of Aviation, one would say. But let's get your perspective to this. Uh, there's been divergent reactions uh, to this statement from the Minister of Aviation, Festus Kiamo. Well, um, uh, good morning once again uh, to Nigerians, and, and, uh, and, and maybe I need to congratulate them. I just hope this microphone will not be Eric. Uh, uh, I'm happy to hear uh, the things coming out from, uh, the, the, from, the, from the Minister of Late. Uh, uh, this is the Minister of Every. Uh, right. Um, on the network. I we will we'll definitely get back to Ulumidi as soon as we can have him. But it's quite a revelation, Kemi, <coughs> uh, coming the statement coming from the aviation minister. Yes. Right, right. We can, you can go ahead with what you were trying to say earlier. Ulumidi. Okay. Perhaps where he is or something. Yeah, quite a, yeah, quite a revelation coming from uh, the minister. One can only imagine, imagine the details of what um, the whole agreement was because he just gave us a snippet of uh, what we are to expect once uh, the whole matter is you know, resolved or sorted with the president. And, of course, um, he also spoke to the fact that this is one issue that many Nigerians need quick answers to because from the whole inception, the whole Nigeria Air project, project has been uh, ridden with so much controversies, especially in the twilight of um, the Buhari administration. Right. You know, many people calling on the former minister, Hadi Sirika, yeah. to also, you know, come up. If, if he has to be prosecuted, if he has to be brought back to give okay. needed answers to the whole contract and, and all of that, um, he, he should be and every other person involved. And with um, you know the minister speaking about that, speaking about the controversial tax tax waivers, naturally many um, you know eyebrows An would, would raise. And then the appointment that it should be all exclu an exclusive Ethiopia uh, staff affair, you know. And then of course the, the legitimate concern you raised about monopoly. If mm. this tax waivers of of a thing, if if it gets to be implemented. What happens to you know growing the economy, growing it brings the to, to, It brings to mind the PNID situation, fair competition that uh, we were just able to resolve some months ago. Finally, resolve so to speak uh, because uh, Niger um, the courts and the UK courts awarded Nigeria uh, that um, case matter, uh, as so to speak. We are not to pay any amount again as it is. Um, I'm wondering how. We, you know, sign agreements with with businesses, with corporations, with people. It just it's mind boggling, really, when you hear details of some of these agreements, and you wonder, did we not read 
the lines of this agreement uh, that we were signing. But we hear Olumide is back now. Olumide, you were going ahead with uh, a line of thoughts with regards to your perception of this revelation from the yes, aviation please. minister with regards to the deal with Ethiopia Air or Nigeria Air, so to speak. Yes, please. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, so so um, I think it was commendable after the, um, after the, all the news and cries from the Nigerian uh, stakeholders and the public. Uh, I, I think it's commendable. Uh, you, you can hear it that um, giving them uh, tax uh, tax waiver and then to compete with airlines within Nigeria that are paying taxes be unfair, and also having almost all the top management uh, staff coming from uh, Ethiopia Airlines. It's not it's not new. In, in all the other partnership they have in Africa. They, they provide the, the staff, they provide the aircrafts, they maintain and insure the, air, uh, insure the aircraft. So you see that more of the profit and the uh, benefit goes to the Ethiopian uh, government and Ethiopian airlines than the host country. So um, I, I'm happy to hear that, to, to, to see that uh, it, uh, we, we are working up to, to see the, the lopsidedness in, uh, in this agreement. Again, the difference between Nigeria and those other countries, we have so many domestic airlines uh, operating flights. In those other countries, they, they, they virtually don't have uh, uh, domestic carriers. So you cannot use the same template to be used in the four or five other uh, African countries in Nigeria. And I think uh, I commend the government. And then there's a need to begin to look at that uh, at, at another another partner or probably uh, uh, push uh, uh, carriers to come, to come out and uh, compete. I, I am so unhappy with the crazy face on international. Um, we cannot be waiting for the for the unborn national carrier before we allow Nigeria Airlines to participate. We must get Nigeria Airlines on the international so we can bring down the debt. Because what we need is more supply and not just keep hanging, uh, hanging on the foreign errors reason for the uh, IFS. But um, you know, where are we? Perhaps you could help um, you know give some more insights regarding uh, the investigation on this uh, Nigeria Air project. The minister revealed that it is uh, currently before the president. Uh, what 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 do you know about um, you know where we are regarding investigations and um, you know what next? I think we have I think we have gone through the, the process of investigation because that's why the report has been submitted to the to the minister. What I do not know is are they asking for a total uh, uh, cancellation of the project or they, do they want to restart the project in, in, entirely using the same name or they are or they are looking for another another partner and a new name? So look, I don't know the, the options before them are. And I never what they would want to build um, uh, or strengthen some of the uh, domestic carriers to start the transport. So these are options before them, and I don't know which one of the it will be, will, it will be the priority of the minister or, the, or Mr. President. But right now, I think that would for Mr. President to just uh, to just put assent to the uh, disapproval of that agenda uh, air project as being uh, uh, coupled by, by the past uh, honorable minister of aviation. I think I support that that that, uh, that agreement cannot not stand uh, considering we will have shareholders on. Uh, shelters on, that, on, on the bottom of that airline that were not known to the industry and the we were not uh, informed how they came about. This child is supposed to be Nigeria and they're supposed to be competing with other Nigerian investors who are airline owners there and they should not be shielded, protected, or given this supreme right. Right. Um, Olivier, about 139 billion naira of uh, taxpayers' monies were involved in this project. And um, there are those calling for uh, the Hadi Sirika, the former minister, aviation minister, to answer questions with regards to this snippet that uh, have been put forward uh, by the minister of aviation, Festus Kiyamu. Uh, how? What do you? What do you say to that? Basically. Well, for us in the for us in the in the aviation industry, we know that the last three ministers we've had have had issues with the uh, uh, EFCC. I don't think uh, we're expecting anything different. Uh, there, are, there are other expenses that have gone beyond that, that are beyond that Nigerian air project. Uh, we, have some, we, have, we also have issues of funds released during the COVID period. We have some contracts uh, that were given in terms of the, the firefighting regulated equipment. Now, the, the new scanner, scanner that was approved uh, just two days ago, we had we we scanners that were, were also bought during this, uh, during, during this tenure. So there are so many things to look into. But, 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 but it's not left for the present EFCC force and their team. See, they have the balls to go ahead and do the business. Don't the you think they, they, they have the capacity to bring him to book? Well, it depends on the, uh, the policy drive of, of, of Mr. President. If Mr. President wants to wants to uh, clean the state, uh, he wants to ensure that uh, uh, all funds that are that are put in the way are brought back, then they will be the not not truly independent. It, it, it depends on the policy of the, of the city government. So it, it's what the government wants that the FCC will do. 
Uh, yeah, but um, looking at an ideal national career project that perhaps would involve a partnership with um, other national carriers, so to speak, in, in this light, if we have to use the Ethiopian airline option or any other option to achieve the dream of, of a national carrier that we you know, once had before, uh, what would be an ideal um, you know, system? What, what would you suggest you know, from your observation, from your long relationship, uh, working relationship in, in this sector? How do we do it to assuage the concerns that the minister raised regarding um, you know, eliminating monopoly, uh, allowing for fair competition amongst local and you know, you know, other players? Yeah, the option, we have options before us. We can either build a flag carriers from uh, those within or, or uh, encourage new airlines to come up uh, and uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the best uh, partners. Or we continue with the, with the, with the other uh, one that we push by government, government having a share, but we cannot do that with Ethiopian airlines. Ethiopian airlines already have ASKAI, but I don't step here. Into, we are already distributing within Africa. Ethiopia is, has a strong network within Africa. And we use the certain to advantage. So if we have to partner any African airline, we have to look at the southern part of our, uh, uh, South Africa or uh, uh, look at Kenya, uh, who's, who's the who's the number one country to Ethiopia. Maybe we don't see that network and see whether we can form another alliance with such people. Then, or, or the other uh, alternative is to look for uh, a partner airline outside the, uh, outside the African continent because you cannot have your competitor come here and say, "Most invest with you." We will only be so. Uh, feeding the bad Sababa and feeding the, the, the Ethiopian network and encouraging more investment uh, and more revenue. They are training school, they are a maintenance company, the insurance mm -hmm. company, and to give them the air that they will listen on my behalf. I don't, I don't think we, 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 we need that. Again, if you look at it, we're going to start with them for the big list aircraft. Why are local airlines are buying brand new aircraft? Why would you just do for that kind of deal? I don't think I support that. And then I just said, let us look at other alternatives and see what we can what we can do with it. I think I don't, I don't mind if you work with the Emirates, Emirates or the, or the Qataris in the UK and They are investing in other airlines in the in, uh, aviation in the industry in uh, Africa. Why would they, they are in Rwanda? So why can they come here? And we have the market. That market is our strength. The population is our strength. The market is our strength. We just need to work on infrastructure and the will to, 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 to have these national interests that self interest. We need to quickly go on a break. When we return, we'll continue this conversation with you. Just stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. So before we went on the break, we were talking about uh, the issues that were raised by the Minister of Aviation, Festus Kiamu, about uh, Ni the Nigeria Air Project. And uh, this matter has been generating controversies and conversations across social media platforms and uh, every platform where conversations can be had. And uh, we have uh, speaking with us before we went on the break, 
uh, General Secretary of Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative, Olumide Umwayo, who has been speaking with us on this issue. Now, Olumide, this whole matter brings to mind what kind of agreements or uh, documents we sign uh, with persons we want to do business with. Recall <clears throat> the PNID issue. One wonders if really, as a government, we are not taking into cognizance the, the, the decisions we take, the impact of the decisions we take on businesses in the country as well as the people in general. Yeah, I think there's a need for us to respect the sanctity of agreements we're going to. And, um, and there's a need to correct whatever um, uh, agreement that has put us into, into some uh, loop. Uh, that's a that's a situation we found in the industry. We also see this uh, current uh, court uh, back and forth between the, the first concession we had at the MN2 and the and the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria. Uh, that has not encouraged uh, all that journey. Industry. We need to foreign direct investment. And you can you can you can only attract uh, the foreigners when they see sanctity and how you are your sanctity, the, the rules guiding your, your, your investment policy and the, and the independence of the judiciary. All of this work together to encourage foreign investors to come. But then we, we it's a it's a it's a learning process on problem on ground. And we I wish we could come to beyond the learning process. We need to learn from my, from my experience and begin to uh, uh, right the wrong. Right. Uh, Olumide, you know, an, another leg to that question would be what options could be before the president regarding the fate of the uh, National Air, Nigeria Air project, so to speak. And, um, of course, is it something that can be reviewed? Is it a contract that can be reviewed uh, without incurring, uh, you know, the wrath of uh, Ethiopia? I think the two, the two players were very smart. Uh, they, they, didn't, they did not bring anything to the table. Every, every, you, know, you know, this is not the first time they've attempted entering Nigeria. They've used um, various ways after getting uh, different requests to enter uh, different cities. They've been trying to, but they tried to with their peace. Even before now, they tried, they tried with Arik, they didn't work. They tried with the government to, they went, even when, when the Virgin Nigeria went down, the, the, the airline that came out of uh, Virgin, they were, they were there and they tried, and it was it was the same for the uh, police of having their uh, team uh, leading it and uh, bringing almost every equipment needed that they uh, broke down that deal. So uh, it's not a, a new thing. I don't think we should go back to the same, uh, it's madness doing the same thing and uh, always. Uh, I think the option before Mr. President is to annul that agreement, annul the processes, and then start, start afresh. And, 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 and in starting afresh, uh, like, like I said earlier, the options are there, are different options. If you want to build flat carriers for the ones you have in Nigeria, you want to start uh, a, new, a, a new carrier by government uh, having substantial uh, ownership and looking for a partner, and if you want to look for a partner, a partner with the business to be that is competing with us and uh, with, with uh, so much advantage and having a neighboring airline to here, as kind already and endorse, but we actually need uh, other African uh, other African carriers and partners that we can book in the US as a global African carrier or going to go for partners in Emirates, uh, Qatar, or any other country. That's being the partner with the different people to be analyzed and not just your job. Uh, that's to be analyzed and to be able to bring in the 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 madness down, complete madness down, and also uh, provide the equipment, training, the shop plans, uh, and maintenance, which has, which always, which means if, if they get more almost sixty to seventy percent, they will never really be generated back to their country. All right, we'll have to leave this conversation here now. Olumide Uhuayo, uh, General Secretary of Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiative. We must thank you for your time on the program.